Welcome to Creatively Using the Creative Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill, and this week I wanted to show you how to make a print effect. We've been doing some web and some Photoshop, but I'd like to show you in design today, and we're going to take a look at how to do a paragraph heading style here, which looks to be more complicated. It looks like it's built up of a couple of shapes with rounded corners, but it's essentially just a paragraph style, one single paragraph style. So I've set up a page here. We've got a title, all the sample placeholder text, and I've got some body text here. And in one place here, I've got this fake subtitle that I'd like to apply this style to. So I'm going to start off by going to my paragraph styles here. And if you don't have your paragraph styles open, you can go to window. You can come down to styles and you'll find your paragraph styles right there. Next up, I'm going to click the new button here to create a new paragraph style for this selected item. And I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to name that subheading for now. And I'm going to start to change what I need to change here. So first off, I'm going to do the basic character formats. I'm going to make the text a bit larger. Let's say about 18. And we can go down here. I want some indents here. I want some space before. And I want a slight bit of space afterwards. We don't need to mess with the tabs, but once we get here to the paragraph rules, this is where we're going to stop for a while. This is where all the magic will happen. So paragraph rules I'm going to set up. We've got rule above and rule below. So you, you can set up here, you see, when I set up rule above, you'll see here that we get this rule. But I don't just want it to be that bit here. I want it to have a little different shape here. So because we're going to make rounded corners, we need one of these to be dotted. And I'm going to definitely increase the size of this. So increasing the weight here will increase the size of these. And I'm, I'm going to start and turn off the rule for now. I'm going to go to the rule below, turn that on. Can increase the weight and neutrally about the font size. So if I picked 18, I can start at 18. And you're gonna see it's gonna add it below. Here's the key rule below adds the rule below the text. I'm gonna increase the weight here just a bit. And then I'm gonna go offset and I'm gonna minus offset it until I get it to cover the text. So let's do 26 here. And click enter and I'm actually gonna deselect for now. Go back in here. Um, now you also have to choose what color we're going to have this in. So I'm going to choose a dark blue here, which means that I can right away go ahead and go to character color. I'm going to set this to white. And now you can also say maybe I want a little left indent here for the text. And maybe just tad space after here. But this is what you're going to need to do here. Now you're going to have to decide a bit on the effect you want. Either you can have the, um, the, the background span from left to right, the entire column, or, which I like the most, span it the text. So here we got it spanning the text, and we can choose here the left indents for this, this shape or the background rule. But I'm going to go to the rule above, and I'm going to enable that now. And with these type types set to what we have, I can go ahead and indent these. And I want to make sure I've got it set to the correct color here. And then we're going to set the width to text again. And then I can play around with my indents here and making sure the offset is correct. Again here, trying to make sure I, I set them. And it's always going to be minus indents here. But I want to make sure I set these at the correct distance. And then I can go back to my rule below and start to indent that slightly. 
My goal is to get the smoothest transition possible between these two shapes. And that might, if that was weight 26, I should definitely have weight 26 um, on that. Or not, it depends a bit here. You're going to have to mix, see if you can find the the very right location for these. It's a bit tricky. Takes a little here, a little practice. And I'm going to just finally do an indent here. So we're starting to get the effect here that, that we want. And this is where you're also going to have to see here what the effect looks like. So we now have the the rounded corners, we've got a background, and if I go ahead and select this and choose another paragraph style, it goes away. So this is completely dependent upon paragraph styles, and I can do it on really any size of text here, and it, it's going to work. And because we, we choose the width of text and not the column, we have the, it's, it's got a variable width, and this would be very hard to do um, otherwise if these rules weren't able to be used in this fashion. So this is a very cool effect. I'd like you to try it out in some print projects. You can do it with varying colors or even trying out some of the other stroke shapes that you've gotten there and see what you can come up with. This is it for this week's episode of The Creatively using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnsgill. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with another tutorial in The Creative Suite. Bye bye. <laughs>